thousands of feet down. It's probably 4,500 to 5,000 feet down. Yet there was life. When it comes to continents, Antarctica is the furthest away and least investigated. In some spots, it is covered by up to three miles of ice, yet recent satellite images have shown what look to be structures created by aliens dispersed over the ice-covered landscape. But how is that even possible? According to Elon Musk, Antarctica devoid of ice may have once been inhabited by extraterrestrials before a catastrophic event ushered in the Ice Age. Does this mean the continent's history is more extensive than what the majority of historians believe? There have been tales of covert Nazi excursions to the continent in pursuit of a lost civilization, reports of weird sightings by government employees, and reports of magnetic anomalies emanating from beneath the ice. Is the answer to the question of whether or not there are ancient aliens somewhere buried in the depths of this icy continent? Join us as we explore the sudden discovery of ancient aliens in Antarctica. Today, experts from all across the world agree that life must exist someplace beyond the galactic horizon. It's not just us. There is no doubt that there is life of some sort somewhere. The only remaining concerns are what kind of life it is and when, if ever, will we come across it. Although many conspirators' tongues have likely been wagging non-stop for about four years, the most recent discovery of yet another pyramid-shaped construction in Antarctica has set them wagging once again. It was reported that a team of scientists had found three pyramids covered in snow, though they hadn't yet decided whether or whether the structures, or, by an enormous stretch of the imagination, peaked mountains, were man-made or natural. Many interpreted this as proof that Antarctica, the most hostile and icy region on Earth, may have once been warm enough to support an ancient civilization. Or were they aliens? Or maybe it was ancient aliens? If your mind starts to stray like ours does, we would totally understand. Ufologists and scholars are quite intrigued by these strange structures. In an effort to explain what the structures in Antarctica are, numerous theories have surfaced. Some think these buildings might be extraterrestrial in origin, constructed on a secret military outpost with access to ancient civilizations with cutting-edge technology. Others think they simply form organically and are unrelated to anything else. What else might be buried far beneath Antarctica's ice cap? The 2009 discovery of pollen, which suggested the existence of trees at one point, fueled the ancient alien theory. When they say early stage, they're referring to roughly 12 million years ago, Long ago, scientists established that if you traveled back in time far enough, say 100 million years, you would have discovered Antarctica and all of its lush forests, mountains and lakes, maybe even a fjord here and there. A fresh twist has been added to the myth surrounding the mysterious mountains of Antarctica, according to a video that claims to reveal yet another pyramid buried beneath the continent's ice. We would be forced to fundamentally rewrite the history of our existence on this magnificent planet if this most recent find turned out to be man-made, let alone alien-created. However, it's also conceivable that the aliens who may or may not have assisted the Nazis in building their underground bunkers in Antarctica's freezing tundra also constructed pyramids, maybe in an effort to divert attention. Who really knows at the end of the day? If you ask us, the description of how glaciated landscapes frequently produce pyramid-shaped structures and how the peaks grow more symmetrical as erosion progresses over time is very dull. A trip to Antarctica by U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry to draw attention to the predicament of the ice region under threat from global warming hasn't helped with any of this. Conspirators think Kerry was actually there to investigate the possibilities of an alien construction project and that this was merely an excuse. Due to the repercussions of getting this significant revelation out there for public discussion, it is being kept silent in the media, despite the fact that it is rather contentious. Pyramids erected before the advent of written history could be found in Antarctica. Modern culture made the first expedition to Antarctica in 1820. The continent was already entirely covered in ice at the time. However, charts that date back thousands of years showed that an unknown ancient civilization did visit Antarctica without ice far earlier. Admiral Peary Race's incredible map has long perplexed cartographers. The original cartography for this map was not done by Peary Race. 
Because no one in his time knew that Antarctica even existed, he could not have learned the crucial information from modern explorers. The map created by Peary Race was a synthesis of several substantially older maps. But how reliable is this supposition? And how, for more than three centuries before it was actually seen, could Peary have included the undiscovered continent? Peary Race was born between 1465 and 1450 in Gallipoli, a peninsula in eastern Turkey, though his exact birth date is uncertain. It was a part of the Ottoman Empire at the time. Race started sailing and navigating the ocean with his uncle Kemal Race at a young age. Piri Race led the charge between the Ottoman Empire and Venice in 1494, when he formally enlisted in the Ottoman Navy as a commander. Piri returned to Gallipoli after his uncle passed away in 1511, and started sketching his own maps and books as he was starting to gain a prestigious reputation for map making. The Book of Navigation and his most renowned map, the World Map of 1513, continue to be among the most researched works of early marine navigational methods. His 1513 world map is one of the first known maps of America and wasn't found until 1929. A little portion of preserved gazelle skin was used to create the map which was centered on the Sahara. Only a third of the original map was found today at Istanbul's Topkapi Palace. However, it is not on show to the public. Despite the fact that the chart was found in the 1920s, Charles Hapgood didn't write a paper on the history of Antarctica until 1965. Peary's map was examined by Hapgood, a professor at the University of New Hampshire, during his research, and he included several speculations about it in his book, Maps of the Ancient Sea Kings. His investigation produced several intriguing findings for which there are few contemporary answers. For starters, Peary Race's map from 1513 appears to have been created using the Mercator projection, the modern-day standard map projection that the Flemish geographer invented in 1563. This approach demonstrates how the display of maps is impacted by the spherical nature of the Earth. Researchers are perplexed by Peary's alleged usage of the Mercator projection because this technology was not found until the late 16th century. One explanation points to the various sources that Peary used to produce his own maps. Peary was reputed to have studied 20 different maps and charts, including Greek, Portuguese and Arabic ones, as well as one that Christopher Columbus drew. As a result of Peary's thorough analysis of these maps, it is possible that the Greeks, who also employed astrological and geological calculations, including latitude and longitude, to create their maps, are the ones who can best explain Peary's usage of the Mercator projection. This spheroid trigonometry wasn't extensively employed until the middle of the 18th century, so it still is astounding. This demonstrated that ancient map makers were accurate to within 50 miles of the exact circumference of the Earth and also knew that the planet was spherical. Scientists and researchers have been perplexed by Peary Race's maps as they try to understand how precise a cartographer in the 1500s was. One feature of Peary's 1513 world map remains unexplained, even with a potential explanation for his mapping style. How did he know to include Antarctica centuries before it was even discovered? Peary's maps were being investigated by Professor Hapgood and others when they found that Antarctica was depicted on the charts, but without its ice caps. This surprised experts because, by most estimations, 97.6% of the continent is currently covered in ice and has been for over a million years. How on earth could he have included a map without the ice caps of Antarctica? Even the depiction of the interior and topography on Peary's map corresponds to contemporary maps of Antarctica. Some have proposed that this might be the consequence of an advanced alien culture or other bizarre, unexplained, supernatural events. Without aerial surveying from 600,000 years ago, how else could Peary Race's source maps depict a continent accurately? According to one interpretation, Peary Race employed a source text that had information from before 4000 BCE. However, this would imply that a prehistoric society had the skill to map the planet and traverse its waters before any widely used languages or technologies. Others who have studied Peary Race's map don't think that the early discovery of Antarctica can be attributed to extraterrestrials. Instead, proposes that Antarctica was once a portion of South America that split apart due to a change in the Earth's axis. The coastline of South America where Uruguay and Argentina are linked, is depicted in close detail alongside Antarctica on Peary's map. 
In his research, Hapgood suggests that the tilt of the Earth's axis may have led to the breakup of the area that is now known as Antarctica from South America and its subsequent migration thousands of miles south, where it is currently encased in ice. However, this notion has been debunked by scientists who assert that it is not conceivable. Professor Charles Hapgood identified the Piri race map as a source of information from maps of the Minoans and Phoenicians, two ethnic groups with numerous skilled navigators, in his 1979 book, The Map of Ancient Oceans. The Alexandrian and Constantinopolitan libraries both housed the maps they created. These maps were transported to Europe during the Fourth Crusade in 1204. Hapgood claims that among them are maps of the South Sea, Antarctica, and the Americas. The ancient's depiction of Antarctica, which had never before been frozen, is baffling, and the fact that they can measure so precisely on the map makes it all the more interesting. According to one belief, there was once a human civilization on Earth between the 5th and 10th millennia BC. People back then had an extensive understanding of astronomy, navigation, and map study, having a level equivalent to 18th century civilization. Human beings are not aliens, it might begin on Antarctica's northern shore or one of the continent's islands where the climate at the time was moderate. Following that, this civilization might invade Africa's northeastern continent. Beginning in the 10th millennium BC, the invasion of ice may have caused this unidentified civilization to vanish. The flood that results from the downpour's extended inundation may also be to blame for this disappearance. Such natural catastrophes have the power to destroy an entire early civilization. Some people, including Elon Musk, contend that Piri's map refers to a lost civilization with technology that is superior to what mankind is aware of today, despite the fact that older maps have either been lost, or are undiscovered, or have been destroyed. Although most scholars reject these assertions, some contend that we should examine history with greater candor. What if a sophisticated prehistoric society existed before Antarctica, even had ice, and perished, as a result of a cataclysmic event. The question now concerns the time period in which this old advanced culture existed. According to ice core samples taken from the Arctic itself, which show that there was no ice during this time, it may have been between 9 and 130 BC. According to some theories, this great civilization may have been the giants who built the megaliths that have been found all across the planet, leaving their historical legacies in the form of ancient rock carvings. What happened to them, and where did they go, are the current mysteries. Definitely, at this point, things start to get interesting. Thanks to information gathered by satellites detecting gravitational anomalies, a team of researchers discovered a massive anomaly beneath Wilkes Land in Antarctica in 2006. They discovered a crater that was approximately 2,400 feet deep and 300 miles wide. They believed that an asteroid caused the enormous crater, which is almost three times larger than the Chicxulub crater, which signaled the end of the dinosaur age. The asteroid that wiped off the dinosaurs was approximately six miles big, whereas this one is thought to be close to 30 miles broad. However, this appears to be the area where researchers are erring. Because it was so deep below Antarctica's ice shelf, experts believe that this impact happened approximately 200 million years ago, although they haven't been able to prove this. They could have been wrong because the asteroid may have only just made an impact 9 to 13,000 years ago. The impact would have been so severe that the poles might have actually shifted, and because the debris would block out the sun, it would undoubtedly bring about an ice age. The combination of it and the tremendous flooding, some researchers say there have been multiple floods, would obliterate 90% or more of all life on Earth, including super civilizations. What are your thoughts on this hypothesis? Could that be true? Many people, including Adolf Hitler, have been attracted by the notion that an ice-free Antarctica was once home to an ancient civilization. Hitler and the Nazis had a strong suspicion that a vanished Atlantean civilization had once resided in Antarctica. Hitler started a pricey mission to the South Pole in 1938. Remarkably, Hitler felt the need to investigate and claim a frigid, frozen continent halfway around the world with little apparent military relevance while Germany was also engaged with all the military preparations for starting World War II. Why did Hitler do what he did? Why did he attach such importance to Antarctica? 
The somewhat contentious Omega file claims that the Nazis began sending multiple exploratory trips to the Queen Maud region of Antarctica in 1938. According to reports, expeditions were frequently dispatched from then white nationalist South Africa. The Germans scanned more than 230,000 square miles of the ice-covered continent from the air, finding warm water lakes and cave entrances, as well as enormous areas that were remarkably free of ice. It has been discovered that one enormous ice cave within the glacier extends 18 miles to a sizable hot water geothermal lake deep below. Hunters, trappers, collectors, zoologists, botanists, agriculturists, plant experts, mycologists, parasitologists, marine biologists, ornithologists, and many more scientific teams were relocated to the area. The Nazis dropped hundreds of swastika-adorned flags throughout Queen Maudland as soon as they arrived in Antarctica to stake their claim to the region. The only mention of a frozen continent in the south pole of the globe in ancient literature is in the Uttara Ramayana, where Ravana flies this land. In the meantime, a perilous myth is fed by the revival of the lost city of Atlantis. The Netflix sensation, Ancient Apocalypse, which is only the most recent telling of an old story, has been seen by millions of people. However, it goes beyond ordinary controversy because of its reliance on race science. The myth of Atlantis has shown extraordinary tenacity over the millennia for a tale that was originally told 2,300 years ago. The story of the ascent of a great ancient civilization and its apocalyptic annihilation, as originally told by Plato, has since given rise to numerous interpretations. Although there have been numerous intriguing and enjoyable iterations, none have generated as much controversy as its most recent appearance in the Netflix series Ancient Apocalypse. The show, which is hosted by author Graham Hancock, makes the assertion that the mythology of Atlantis was inspired by the destruction of an advanced civilization due to floods brought on by a massive comet that hit Earth. Hancock claims that after the catastrophe, survivors scattered over the world, which at the time was occupied by basic hunter-gatherers carrying with them knowledge of science, technology, agriculture, and grand structures. It is said that we owe everything to these men who resemble gods. Hancock, who has been advocating these concepts in his works for decades, also claims that archaeologists have purposefully concealed this dire prediction of the expansion of civilization and reproaches mainstream academia with having extremely defensive, arrogant, and patronizing attitudes. The Sahara, the Antarctic, and countless other locations have all been proposed as potential locations for this ancient civilization. Hancock is not the first to assert that the fall of a once-proud civilization paved the way for the emergence of culture elsewhere. Atlantis, the antediluvian world, written by controversial U.S. congressman and well-known author Ignatius Donnelly, asserted that a highly complex, sophisticated culture had been wiped out by a flood 10,000 years ago and that its survivors had spread out across the globe teaching the rest of humanity the secrets of farming and architecture. Sounds recognizable? The Nazis followed after that. Many fervently believed that a superior white Nordic race, those with the purest blood, had migrated from Atlantis. Himmler established the SS organization known as the Ananerba, or Bureau of Ancestral Heritage, in 1935 to ascertain where the inhabitants of Atlantis went after the flood destroyed their home continent. And this helps to explain why it's so helpful to believe in the myth of a long lost civilization. It is a straightforward story of a rise and fall that may be used for a variety of purposes. There is still no justification for Antarctica's presence, but one thing is certain. Peary Race's 1513 world map is a remarkable illustration of the world's unanswered mysteries and how much more there is to learn. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.